So Lightroom 11 came out, there are new updates. Normally I could care less about Lightroom updates, but this is different. I texted Ty immediately when I started using these new features because it's insane. I can't wait to show you. Hey there, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Caitlin. This is a place where we like to empower photographers to build both profitable and purposeful businesses while also you letting, also you, what? Mm while also letting you in the behind the scenes of our day-to-day -day life. I'm gonna take you into Lightroom. This new tool, it's an auto masking tool using, using artificial intelligence to select. For me, what I love is selecting the subject within a photo and being able to edit just the subject. I, I have never seen something so accurate. It's almost creepy. It's almost creepy how good this is. Um, there's a lot of power in this, and I think it's gonna be a game changer for photographers. It's it's hard to even explain to you exactly how powerful this is. I just need to show you. So we're gonna go into my laptop, and you're gonna watch me use this new tool. Okay, so here we are, we're in Lightroom Classic. This is Lightroom 11. This is what has changed most drastically. Up here, you're gonna see a whole new kind of bar. Um, so all of the like isolated editing adjustment brushes um, have been adjusted. I do wanna say, when you click here, um, a lot of people have emailed us and they're like, oh my gosh, like I lost my brushes from the KJ preset process. No, you have not. They are still here. You want to click here and just go to brush and then go to effect and you still have your options down there. So that's just to help those people. But this is where, um, this is where things get kind of new and crazy and awesome all at the same time. When you are selecting up here, you kind of have these options that appear on this secondary bar that pops up. Um, you can select the subject, select the sky. You can choose, this is where your radial and your linear gradient options went. Color range is crazy. I've, it's a whole, gosh, I could make a whole other video about that. Um, luminance range, depth range. So for me, what I have played with so far is selecting the subject, brush, linear, and I have not even used the radial gradient yet. I know it's gonna be amazing. But what I've used on this wedding was brush, linear, and selecting the subject. So let me just show you what this looks like. You literally just click select subject and it's detecting. It takes a minute. You can see the spinning wheel down here and it selects just the subject. I mean, completely accurately. Like let's zoom in here. Um, fascinating. Look at that. That's amazing. Like down to the little hairs, like her little flyaway hairs. So um, this wedding was incredibly challenging to edit. So I want to show you what really blew me away and why I think this is actually useful because it's cool that it can use artificial intelligence to really select only what the focus and the subject of the photo is. Um, but what you can do with the power of this is what's really crazy. Okay, so this photo, I, I am not super proud of this photo. I don't, I don't like the light here. It, it's a little too hazy for me. Normally when you have a photo like this, the, the struggle is you can't get them to pop enough because, at least for my style. Um, now, this is not crazy hazy. I'm actually gonna show you another example of this in a second. But I just thought to myself, okay, what would happen if I selected just them and brightened the whites for just them and made just them pop? Like, I actually think this would be a great opportunity to use this new feature. So I didn't even know if it was gonna be able to select them, but then I tried it and let's see what it does. I'm just gonna start over and show you. Okay, so it selected them perfectly. Like it even, look at this. It even left out the hole where his arm is. Her flyaways are almost perfectly masked out. Like it's insane. Like it's a little bit creepy. And you can see up here, that is a new mask. And you can actually, it kind of reminds me of Photoshop. You can add different mask layers and then just select those edits which is fascinating. And there's so much control. It feels like control of Photoshop, but the artificial intelligence part of it makes it like weirdly accurate. If you were selecting something like this in Photoshop, the old Photoshop, I mean, it would take so long. And this is just automatic, like five seconds and just the subject is selected. So anyway, what does this mean for us? Well, if I was editing, so let's get off of this for a second. Um, if I was just editing this like normal, Basically, you're applying edits to the entire image, which is normal and you should shoot to be able to do quick edits because if you're shooting well in camera, you don't need necessarily to use the masking tool as much, but when you need to tweak little things, it's it's a game changer. So I'm gonna do bold too. I'm using the KJ preset process. It's a game changer 
4,000 plus photographers. I, there's probably more now. I don't know the numbers, but so many photographers are using this all the time with their work because it streamlines their editing. So anyway, I'm gonna try to make it pop here, but you can see like even when I'm adding pop to this image, I just still want them to have a little bit more brighter whites. So I can add that here just a little bit, but if I really wanna be in control of them, let's get these colors a little under control. If I really wanna be in control of them, now I have this option where I can go, I'm gonna add some magenta. I can go here, I can go back to the mask layer and I can say, okay, only on the subject. I want to I want to brighten some things up. Do you see what's happening here? Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm going to add contrast just on them. Just on them. Uh I I'm going to reduce highlights just on them. Do you see how it's just affecting them? Okay, this is crazy. The whole image, the light was not perfect. I should have moved them further closer to the edge of the shadow to avoid some green skin tones. I can take away some of that tone by adjusting the tint but the tint is just being adjusted on them. Insane. All right, I'm gonna bump it up by like 11. Wow, the texture, you could make them a little crisper, just them. Like, this is bizarre. I, I think what is crazy about it is that I'm able to do these adjustments and change these little things that I was so frustrated with before, and it looks natural and it looks fine. It doesn't look like I did anything extraordinary. It just looks like, oh wow, what a great, pop even in a hazy setting. So love that. Let's, let me show you some other options. Also, let's zoom in and just see, can you see like where the magenta tone stops? No. Can you see? No, because the mask is so good. It's bizarre. Okay. So I'm not saying that that's like the perfect final edit, but I have other things to show you. So let me, let's look at this photo. So this photo is not, a lot of times I like to shoot with a tighter focal length with a higher level of compression. So it looks like the client is like literally separated so clearly, kind of like that last shot. I think that was the 85 millimeter. Uh, yeah, um, shot it, that was shot at 1.4, by the way. Whole nother video. Can we talk about this? Oh, look at that. 1.4, 85 RF lens, crystal clear, full body shot. Anyway, that's, we can talk about that another time. Um, this image was shot with the 28 to 70. It was shot at 28 millimeters. Um, at 2.8. So there's a lot of reasons why this image is completely different. And I thought to myself, oh, I don't think this is really going to be able to select the subject as well as it did for that last image because they are not pulled from the background as much. Um, so again, I struggle with light here. The background is so blown out. Um, but look at this. So uh, I'm going to select the subject again. It's thinking, it's detecting, just them. Crazy. Now this is not quite as accurate as the other one, but it is so close that it doesn't like it, it still selected the background there, but look at the edging here. Look at that. His suit, his hair, like even though he's against some, a, a busier background, it's still doing a great job. So why is this important? It's important because in an image like this, that's got some highlight issues, some overexposed background issues, it allows me to still just change and tweak things. Now, you can also, when you're selecting this, you can still invert and see the opposite of what you're selecting. So that means I can inverse this, and now everything except them is going to be selected, which means I have control all of a sudden over the entire background. So I can pull down my highlights in the entire background. I can open up the shadows more in the entire background. Um, I can darken it up and make it a little bit heavier. And this is all stuff that was possible with the previous Lightroom options, but not necessarily because the only way to necessarily do this well would be to hand mask and try to use the old masking feature. And it just was not precise. This is completely different. So I am so, I am, let me show you another thing. I just, <laughs> Okay, so this image, obviously, it, the, I know, I'm going to get comments about this. Um, I know that it's overexposed in the background. Very aware of that. It was purposeful. <laughs> we'll, we'll do a YouTube video on that too. Um, but the goal of this is for it to look natural, for it to look kind of ethereal, angelic. The struggle with an image like this is getting pop. I love pop. How do you get pop in an image like this has so much backlit haze? Well, normally when you would edit it, you can brighten it and it's gonna be really pretty, but like to get the pop where you want it, um, 
and to, and to make the whites whiter, to make them pop more, you're gonna overexpose more so the background. We don't need that. So I thought to myself, oh, I should try, and I actually haven't done this yet. We should try and see what selecting just the subject on an image like this, what would happen with that. So let's see how it does. It's just like waiting for a magic trick. Magic. <laughs> okay, so it's seriously, this is so crazy. I mean, I hope I, people have been freaking out. Look at the detail of her dress down to the little knobs of fabric from the flowers on the detail of her dress, every button on the back of her dress is selected. I mean, you you couldn't manually do this any better if you tried, you, you really couldn't. I mean, you would spend your whole life. Anyway, I just realized there's like a shoe box in the background of this. Okay, anyway, I selected just them and this gives me so much control because look what I can do now. I can change just them so I can darken the darks brighten the shadows, pull down the highlights on them, add some contrast, increase the texture if I wanted to. And then if I want to make this black and white, because obviously they're getting a little bit, it's a little bit orange here. Um, this is going to make such a poppy black and white now that I've made those adjustments. Okay, so I actually think I could do more because that's not as poppy as I'd like. All right, look at this. I have so much control over just them. I can pull down the highlights on them. I can brighten the whites on them, crazy. Yes, I have, okay, this is my first time trying it on a non, per. I, I honestly don't know what it will do here, so we'll see. We're gonna select the subject. It, it's almost perfect. That is, how does it know that? You should come look at this. I mean, you're gonna see it. How does it know? I mean, that's that's nearly per, oh, oh, what am I doing? Yeah, where did it mess up? Right here, that's oh, it though. Right, right, right. That's fascinating. So, yeah, it's, it's like magic. What, is the, what does that triple dot do? Um, it is kind of just like uh, viewing options for your mask. Oh, I see, I see. There's um, gotta be a way to edit the mask, right? You gotta figure, um, this subtract, gotta subtract, subtract? Subtract mat subtract from mask with brush. Oh yeah, see it should be brush. Can you do it? Let's see. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So zoom in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now zoom in. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm. So I would get I mean, if you want to get really precise, you would just like zoom in closer. But yeah, yes. I mean, you know. That because I mean, there's mm -hmm. gotta be a way that if it's not perfect, that you can do like you just make in adjustments that situation. without having to do it your manually. Right. But then I wonder if it mm. still can do the auto mask. Like before, you know how it would still do like a little bit of a... Mm, yeah, like... Oh, like it's detecting it again. No, that didn't work. But this is something okay, to play so with. Okay, so you can edit it. Okay, so you, you can should say it. that. Okay, good news, you can edit it. I actually think, I just thought, well, when would we use this? Well, a lot of times when photographers are shooting um, imitation suites, especially imitation suites that are white paper goods, a lot of times, the, the actual suite itself, the text can be hard to read or the, the paper can look more blue than the background. This would solve that problem because you can instantly select and it's instead of brushing over just parts of it, this is gonna make that edit so much more clean. I'm thrilled, I'm still thrilled with it. I'm still learning it. I'm still learning how to recalibrate and sync it with other edits. So as I continue to, to use this on my own work, I will let you know what I find out, what I learned from it, the power of it, and I'll do an updated video. But initial overview of this tool is that it gives you so much power in editing. And in some ways, I hope it doesn't become a disadvantage because people, instead of learning, this is my fear, instead of learning like, oh, I, I don't know how to shoot without getting this haze. Well, that's an in-camera fix, or it should be an in-camera fix. And now there's more ability to fix it post processing. So I hope that this doesn't make people lazy. I still think people need to learn how to shoot the best they can straight out of camera, but this is a great tool to help fix a lot of problems that a lot of people struggle with. It's a great tool, super impressed. Yay Lightroom, yay Adobe. <laughs> you finally did something that's worth talking about. I mean, I, it, Lightroom's amazing, but this was really a step up and I'm really impressed with it. So hope you enjoyed this, hope it was helpful. Um, there's so much more that I could say about this, but I honestly, I want to use it for more than just editing one 
blog post from one wedding um, before I dive into everything it can offer you. So this was the basic overview, first pass. We'll update in maybe a few weeks, maybe a couple months um, to show you what I'm truly doing with these new features. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll like and subscribe so you can watch other videos in the future. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next week. Bye.